So hello and welcome to today's session on email marketing and in particular what we're going to be focusing on in this session is actually setting up these automated emails and what emails should they be. So I was just having a quick chat there with Wade behind the scenes at this time of year is always the time that I am rejigging, rewriting or re-implementing my automated email sequences for the year to come. And today I'm going to be sharing with you what the most important email sequences are and what should be in those emails. And of course, uh, what we can pop into ChatGPT to help us with the content creation of those. And then the all important tech part of how to actually set it up. And I will tell you now, guys, that having your emails behind the scenes that are completely automated will generate for you a substantial amount of income. And the people that are not doing it really truly are missing out on a huge amount of nurturing relationship building and of course income. The truth of the matter is that today, particularly in the last 18 months, the buying decision time of your followers of your industry has more than doubled, i.e. it's taking now more than twice as long as it did two years ago for somebody to make a buying decision, the average person. The other statistic that's recently come out is that up until about 18 months ago, it took an average of 11 digital touch points with a customer to turn, well, with a person to turn them from a lead into a customer, i.e. the average person was required to receive communication from you, to see you on social media, to see content from you at least 11 times before they would consider making a purchase. Consider making a purchase. That average is now 23 touch points. And that has changed in the last 18 months alone. So a lot of people were saying, you know, is there a recession coming? Is there a financial crisis looming? Truth is none of us really know the answer to that. However, buying behavior has changed, not stopped. Okay, so I really wanna bring that home. People are still spending their money I don't know about you, but how many of you are saving? You're still spending your money, right? Everyone is still buying. There are billions of dollars a day being spent in your industry. People are just taking longer to buy, to do that spend. So I really want you to go into this with that kind of, you know, we're not losing customers. We there, There's not less out there to be had. We just need to strategize how we're taking people through that buying journey. And we're going to use automation to make it a lot easier on us. Having an email list is a having an asset in your business. So if you were to ever sell your business, your email list is actually calculated as an asset. And just to give you a very real life example, I've just had Techmatics valued um, on its one year birthday. Um, one of the very, very detailed things that are assessed and analyzed is the number of people that are on your list, your database. And if those people are active customers, i.e., and this is one of the things that the analysts actually reviewed and had to go in and view data on in my business, was are people opening emails from you? Are the emails being read? What percentage of those people click and open the emails? And all of these statistics actually add to the valuation of your business. I'm very pleased to um, share that Techmatics was just valued at $15 million in its first year, um, which is really exciting. And how did we do that? It comes down to having repeated revenue and having a system in place that over a period of time consistently converts leads into customers. And that is what we're going to be teaching you today. This is so important. I want you to put this process at the top of your to-do list before the new year because this is what will put this relationship building, this nurturing, this database and audience growing, and of course your sales increasing um, onto a model that really is going to affect your bottom line down the road. So with no further ado, first thing I'm gonna do is give you a overview. And this, what I'm gonna show you here uh, will be downloadable. It is already in one of the, uh, the trainings that we did earlier in the year. So if uh, some of you feel like this looks familiar, uh, that's because it is, but we're gonna um, also make this a downloadable file for you inside this session as well. So the first thing I want you guys to think about before you start creating any kind of email automation sequences, and we will be going into what they are, is first of all, what is your customer journey looking like? What is it going to look like? 
um, in 2024 and beyond. So by customer journey, I mean, what point do people come into your world and what is all the stuff that you can sell them? Now, I don't need to get fancy about this. Just first step one is write down everything that I can buy from you, everything that you sell or plan to sell. So are you selling courses, digital eBooks? Do you have coaching calls? Do you have workshops? Do you have in-person retreats and boot camps? Do you have a done for you service? Um, what is it? What are all the things that even if it's not ready yet, you're gonna sell to me within the next 12 months? That's the first thing you need to write down. Now, the second thing I do is then order those usually from the cheapest to the most expensive. And that's purely for organization's sake. Not everyone will go cheapest and then a bit more expensive. And then a bit more expensive. Like, that's just not how the buying decision works. Like some people are going to come in and go straight to the high ticket version. But what we want to do is just organize it in some kind of order. Now, one place that we want to put that customer journey later when we go into tech is inside our customer journey section in Techmatics for those who are using it. How did my logo just revert back to the old one? <laughs> What's happened? <laughs> Something's going on. So you see here, I've got this. Is this a real or is this a pretend? I thought I had a pretend one. What's going on? Someone's obviously updating something right when I'm doing a demo. <laughs> Let me just open up a demo uh, customer journey for you. Okay, so what you'll have here, this is an example of um, new leads. Uh, actually, is this the one I want to share? Let me give you, oh, I think that's a demo one. Here we go. Here's a pretend customer journey. Okay, so you're always going to have in the first column, the first step of your journey, people who are just leads, right? They've opted into a free lead magnet. They're on your email list. They are, they've, you've pulled them up from a database. Um, so they're leads. Then you might have a cheap course. You might have a free call or a strategy call might be part of your customer journey. Um, you might have a cheap online course. You might have a coaching program, a done for you service, a membership. Uh, there might be a boot camp. right? These are all the things. These are steps in your journey of all the things that people can buy from you. And in terms of how you add those, um, all you got to do is go up to pipelines up here. This is called a sales pipeline. You press create a new pipeline and you would call this, you know, your customer journey, Sarah's customer journey, Wade's customer journey. And all you're going to do here is add in all of the stages that you might have. You know, it might be an ebook, might be the next thing I might sell, um, X, Y, and Z online. Oh, we're definitely not selling curses around here. <laughs> Courses, <laughs> um, coaching program. All right, you just keep pressing add stage and you can move them around if you want to. I might have a retreat or a boot camp. I might have X, Y, and Z service. You get you can add them all um, in here. You can change this at any point at any time. It's not fixed at all. So once you've saved that, you go to your customer journey section at the top here. You go and find particular customer journey we just created. Now I recommend only having one customer journey. You can have pipelines for other things as well. That's for another training. But the one I've just created there, she's there. And now you can see, boom, boom, boom. We've got uh, these stages that people can move through. Now, I'm not going to go into that too much today. I've got other trainings on customer journey um, that we will go into more as well in the future. But I just want you to think about this at this stage of creating email automations, because the point of your emails and write this one down. The point of my emails is to make friends and to sell stuff. OK, so the first part there is if we're out there visually, physically networking with each other, what's the point in going to a networking meeting? Right? It's to make friends. It's to become mates with you. It's to look you in the eye and get to know you. And hopefully you get to know me. Um, email is exactly the same way. You're just doing this in a digital format. And the second point of going to a networking meeting, hopefully, is to make potential connections with potential customers who are eventually going to buy something from us. And this is what you need to see your email as as well. It is a marketing strategy. So each one of your emails is going to have or point to something that people can buy from you that you can help them with. And we'll be talking about this language in a moment. And that's why at this beginning part, before we even go into what these automations are, I want you to know what you plan to sell next year. Now I'm gonna take it one step further than that. 
when it comes to these emails, if there is one particular hero product that you want to make your number one goal of getting everybody to buy next year, of all the things you've written down, which one would you like everyone to go to if you could only sell one? I call this my hero product. This is the one thing that I wanna get everyone to buy. For me, it's my academy. I love my academy model. It's where I can be really creative. I can create lots and lots of different training and boy, do I have a very exciting academy for you next year. It's the name's changing, we're getting rebranded and it's going to give you customized, personalized journeys with private personalized checklists and training plans and everything. It's gonna be amazing. It's all gonna be um, AI customer journey focused, um, not in terms of content, but in terms of guiding you through what you need for your particular business, right? So anyway, hero product for me is my academy. So in all of my emails that go out, they are very subtly nudging people towards the academy. So for you, what is your hero product that you really want to get everyone into next year? Because that's going to be the one that we really focus on and is going to drive the content of our emails. With me so far? Any questions so far? Mm -mm -mm. Cool. Okay. Now we know what our hero product's going to be. Here are the three main email sequences I want to talk to you about. The first and most important one is called the welcome sequence. The welcome sequence is the first parts of communication that people receive from you when they join your email list whether you've manually added them, whether they've opted into a freebie, whether you've, you know, they've joined your newsletter, whatever it might be. This is that first set of touch points. Now, up until last year, that set of touch points was 10, 11. As you've just heard from me now, that's actually around 23 today. So there's a couple of different ways that you might choose to go about this. I still am personally gonna keep my welcome sequence 11 emails. And I'm gonna explain why in a second, because the second email automation you're going to need is what's called an ongoing nurture sequence. Because we may not make friends in 23 touch points, right? It might take us longer than that to make friends. Now, I often do this um, in the session day. If either of you wanna uh, pop in the chat, actually it'll be really interesting. How long had you heard of me or seen me around online? before you bought anything from me? I'd love to know if you can pop it in the chat. So here, what I often find is, yeah, you'll have the few people that are like, the second I saw you, I thought you were amazing. And I'm like, why well, thanks. Um, <laughs> but most people would say like, you know what? Actually it was probably about a year or two after first seeing your face on my social media before I did something or as a year or two after someone mentioned you at something and it took me a while to get there, but I did eventually. Okay, so yeah, about 18 months, six months, two months, two years, absolutely. Um, bubbling away for about two years. Isn't this a crazy? Isn't this really interesting? Now, would you guys have ever bought from me if for two years I didn't stay in touch with you? If I just disappeared off of the radar of your vicinity? No, I would have been gone, it would have been a distant memory. The reason why you bought something from me is because I carry on communicating. And it's so subtle, <laughs> but it works. And this is what you have to do because this is all, if I look at this this way, the, you guys are all sales, essentially, this is a horrible way of wording it, I know, and I don't look at you like this, but this is the point right? we're talking about, that wouldn't have happened if I didn't have this in place. And you are missing out on sales because you haven't got this necessarily working for you yet either. So the ongoing nurture sequence is us simply not stopping after the first 10 touch points. We just keep going. <laughs> and I will explain, by the way, what's in them. So that's coming. Now, the third type of automation that you must have is an automation that's related to the product that people are buying. Because if we look at this customer journey, in green here, we've got our lead stage. These people haven't yet bought. They've signed up for something, so they're interested. They've got on a 
on a mailing list for some reason. Um, then they buy something. So you see here, I've put all of my oranges and something they might have purchased. Now this is when we must have a sequence for the thing that they have bought. Why? So that they open it, <laughs> so that they consume it, so that they use it, so that we can ask them for a review, right? So that they get good results and wanna buy more from us along our customer journey. If somebody buys something cheap down here, and we don't check in with them, we forget we bought it, they forgot they bought it, and they're never gonna buy anything up here because the, the thing they bought from us already didn't do anything for them because we forgot to remind them, right? So this is really important, having this automation. Now I have a little bonus automation over here on the right-hand side. This is um, creating automations for running projects. So for instance, if you have a done for you service, if you have maybe some kind of special coaching package that includes us doing stuff together, you know, you're gonna wanna have some kind of automation in place to manage that project, to make sure that all the tasks are assigned to the right person, that I don't know, uh, contracts are sent out to make sure that staff are fulfilling their duties, that you're following up with the individual for meeting times, I don't know, whatever it might be, and um, project deliverables getting done. So um, there's some details in here that we're going to go through and have a look at. This last one will we'll come to if we have time, because today's purpose is to get at the very least your welcome sequence in place. But I wanted to give you this overview first of all. Yeah. Now, when we're teaching anything, guys, the uh, most important thing to do is to always share with people the end result. So keep this in mind when you're teaching. Always show people the end result first. So what we've done here, just from a little course creation teacher trainer tip, is I've given you a visual overview. That's the first thing we've done. And um, here you can see uh, a, a simple process of what a email sequence might look like. Then what I'm gonna do is show you what it looks like in real life. The reason we do this for our learners is so that the neurons can actually visually see, a better understand what is going to be done and success increases. So here we have my actual welcome sequence inside Sarah Gordner. Um, so I do have a little bit of complexity up the top here, but in the simple, the simple parts are this. What starts this sequence? It's called a trigger in email language. What fires off an automation? So in my case, they have filled in my form, which is to get my free stuff. This is the form for getting my free lead magnets. Or the trigger is, I'm gonna make it a bit bigger for you. Let me make this bigger. The, tr the other trigger is that they have become a new contact. So in my world, anyone who gets my free thing or joins my list for any reason whatsoever, gets added to my sequence. So I actually got in my sequence that you automatically get given access to some of my free courses. So they get free access to this and they're given free access to this and given free access to this and given free access to this. You get the point, they get all these free things. And then the, the sequence starts and here's how it goes, right? A sequence looks like this in a welcome series. First of all, they get a welcome email. So in this email, it's gonna say something like, hello, first name. Thanks for joining my course creators community. Um, over the next 10 days, I'm gonna share with you some of the top 10 tips that I have come across as an expert in my field of course creation. And they're gonna be these. And I list the 10 questions that I'm gonna be answering for them. And I've tested this over years. <laughs> Having the list of the questions that you're going to answer massively reduced my unsubscribe rate because a lot of people join the list to get the free thing they get the free thing and then unsubscribe however when up front in this first email I was telling people what they're going to learn if they stay they actually stayed and here's the next most important part about telling them what you're going to teach them over the next 10 emails is that you leave the most popular one until last <laughs> So the one thing that you know everybody wants the answer to, that's going to be email number 10, <laughs> because that's going to keep them hanging around longer, by which point they are going to be much more likely to make that buying decision. So again, overview is we send them a welcome email. We tell them what we're going to teach them over the next 10 emails. And then we're going to have our wait period. So in my case, I wait for one day and then I send them the first tip. 
Now, <laughs> we're going to be going more into what's in the emails in a moment, but I recommend that your emails, to avoid being spammy, hammy salesman, is to be the most helpful person in your industry, to really share practical, practical, <laughs> get it done type information. Why? Because if this is people's first impression of you, that you are super helpful and generous, that this first email helped them so much, they are going to open the next email, right? It's not just some crappy sales pitch. It's you being super helpful. They're going to want to keep opening. Now we have, um, I wait now for five days between my emails. I used to do them um, every other day. And again, buying behavior has changed. I found that people were getting very overwhelmed with that amount of emails coming that fast, especially because mine are practical. Mine are, here's a thing to go and do. And people weren't having time to implement. And I was getting a lot of emails back going, oh my God, I love your emails, but I, they're just stacking up and I'm not getting to them because it's just, I don't have time to implement. So I've got five day wait steps in mind. So you can see here, here's actually the real people sat in my email automation right now. So we wait for five days and then I send them the second tip. And then I wait for five days and I send them the third tip. And I wait for five days and I send them the fourth tip, right? You get the point. You can see here, look at all these people just sat here, just automatically going through the sequence. So this goes on and on and on and on and on and on all the way down until we sent them 10 tips. I wait for five more days um, and then I ask, have they joined the academy or not? This is called a condition action. I'm going to show you how to build these, so don't panic. <laughs> condition action. Have they joined the academy? Yes or no. If they have, then we add them to a, another workflow. If they haven't, well, we want to keep selling to these guys. So we add them then to the ongoing nurture sequence. As you can see in our diagram over here, let me make this much bigger for you now, because now I'm going to give you an overview of the diagram side. As you'll see here, Oh, hang on, I can't move my mouse around. Um, when someone becomes a lead, they then go into this welcome sequence. And so you can make this look however you want, but they are now getting an email, getting an email, getting an email, all the way down 10 times. Oh my gosh, I'm really struggling to move this graph. <laughs> all the way down. And then you can see at the very end, we have a sales email, an outright sales email. We've been helpful 10 times in a row. We have an outright sales email at the bottom. Cha-ching, 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 dollar sign. Follow the line back up. We're going to go back up this line. And the automation is then going to send them into the ongoing nurture sequence. So let's go more into the anatomy of these emails. What's in them? Now, I've said, first of all, tip, a helpful practical tip is in them. But what's the point of emails? Two reasons, to be nice and helpful. It's also to make money. So I have a strategy and that I've been using this for about nine years where I just put a PS at the bottom. So I had this really helpful tip and then it goes PS first name. If you're still looking to create an online course topic, right? If you still are wanting to do whatever it is that you teach, what is it you teach? If you're still wanting to do this, here are three ways that I can help you. Number one, my X, Y, and Z online course. Number two, my X, Y, and Z coaching program. Or number three, I don't know, my done for you service. We're using these helpful emails to build that relationship, to be the most helpful go-to person in our field, to make people want to keep opening out emails, but also to go, I'm here to help you do that. I'm the guy that's gonna help you. Mm. For me, it's create courses. And here's how, here's how I can help you. Go back to your customer journey and you're gonna pick out three of those things that you want to offer as your way of helping people do the thing that you help people do. So I'm gonna open up a couple of my emails for you to show you just what they look like. And then we're going to put some prompts into ChatGPT just to help you come up with these 10 emails because what I want you guys to do today is get these first 10 emails of yours drafted. And the ongoing nurture sequence is really easy from there on. So this one here is, I'm gonna take you in to Sarah's emails. And I'm going to find over in marketing. 
we're going to go to our email builder and I'll be talking about the tech stuff in a moment so do not panic <laughs> my email my internet is very much struggling today I'm going to find I think it's email one I think it's called email one let's have a look here's one here's a tip here's a tip so I'm going to open up one of my random emails from that 10 part sequence I think that said it's here we go it's email number 10 which is tip number nine and I'll just show you the anatomy of it in terms of the layout. And now how long should your emails be? And this is why this is loading. Um, I recommend that your emails are the length and duration at which you would normally speak, communicate or answer a question, because this is the digital version of you making friends. Now I um, am not known for my brevity. <laughs> my blog posts are long. My explainer videos are fairly long. And that's the kind of audience I attract. People, like, they want information. So my emails tend to be on the longer side. Um, it's completely up to you. The data does show that shorter emails, less than 300 words, do get read more and do convert better, particularly if you've got a lot of a cold audience or people that don't know you very well. You might want to keep yours nice and short. Um, so there's no rule. That's what I want to make the point of here. There isn't a rule as to how long your emails will be, but general rule is shorter converts more. But having longer emails, if you've got an audience of people who already know you, certainly will not do you any harm. Like, oh no, she's been too helpful. No one says that. So <laughs> what I normally have in mine is a uh, an image. I wouldn't recommend putting too many fancy images in your emails, guys. The more content that's in there, the more likely the ESP is going to block your email or put it in spam. Um, so I keep mine really simple, one, maybe two Im images in there. And I go straight into it. Hi, first name. Right? You're still in my 10 tips to doing whatever it is that I teach. And then I normally put a little bit of story in mind. I'm trying to build up at this stage, at this first stage, uh, a kind of a relationship. I want people to get to know my personality. So I put a little bit, a little bit of a story. Now, the other thing I do is I also cover the questions I've already answered. Because some of you might not have seen the last six emails. This is email number nine. Um, so I always say, remember at the very beginning, the first email you got was, hi, first name. If you're looking to do a certain thing, here are the 10 tips I'm gonna share with you over the coming weeks. In each one of those tips, I will include the last tips I'd sent. And these actually link to a blog post version answer of these tips. It keeps people clicking on your content. It makes them go back and read stuff that they may have missed when your emails are getting clicks. This is obviously very good for your business. <laughs> so I have a summary of, here's what we covered in the last few emails I've sent you. Now today's tip is all about blur. I give them the tip. Now again, my emails are long. I would recommend keeping yours shorter. And then I have, oh, looky, looky, PS, first name. Have you checked out this yet? And this is where I have my hero product, which for me is my membership. So for you, what is it? Now, the other example I have here is, are you still thinking about, and then what is it you teach them? What is it you're helping them doing? Okay, so are you still thinking about becoming a better leader? Are you still thinking about improving your leadership skills? Are you still thinking about becoming a paid speaker? If so, here are X ways that I can help you do that. And then you're gonna go back to that customer journey and list the things that they can buy from you so that you can help them get that result. See how this doesn't feel as salesy, doesn't have that it to it, right? It's just much more comfortable. You've been this really nice person. And PS, if you still wanna do this thing, I can help you. I'm that guy that is here to do that. And I've been proving it to you already in the last 10 emails I've sent. <laughs> So this, you can't keep reminding people enough of what you have on offer. We are so consumed in our business. We do often make the mistake of thinking everyone knows what we do and how we can help. The easier we make it for people to buy from us, the more likely they're going to be to buy from us. And so many people miss this and leave the hard work to the buyer to go and do the research. Don't do that. <laughs> Put it in front of them and tell them how. Now I've got a lot of logos to update. Uh, Febby, note to the team, <laughs> we need to update all these emails. 
<laughs> All right. So um, you can also add a button in here as well. So as you can see here, my hero products, my academy, and I have a button that goes to that one hero product that I really want everybody to go to. Now, you've seen a rough uh, anatomy. We've got a tip. We give them the tip. We say, P.S., here's the ways I can help you. And we link them out to it. What on earth are we going to put in our 10-part emails? Now, at the beginning, I said, plan your hero product. I want you to plan your emails around the topic of your hero product. This is going to make it a lot easier <laughs> to pick one because I know a lot of you teach multiple topics. So in terms of content, you could focus on a number of different tips that cover a whole array of the things that you can help and advise people on. Or you might specifically hone in on that one core thing. So for me, again, I could teach a million different things, but I still focus on my core topic of course creation because it's really so much easier for you to become famous in a particular niche and then offer that niche everything else afterwards than it is to try and be everything to everyone. You're going to get tagged in Facebook groups as that guy, right? If you make yourself known for a particular core thing. That's how you get recommended. That's what you get invited to speak on stages for. That's what you get invited to speak on podcasts on. That's what you get booked for as an expert in your field. Being a massive expert in one particular core thing. So I would recommend you pick something if you're a bit of an everything person, because that's going to really help you get seen and noticed as an authority in your field. You can still teach everything else, but this is going to really get you focused on leading in a particular niche. I see I've got some uh, chats popping up there. Uh, Jamie says, what frequency do you recommend for your emails? Okay, awesome question. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, so the, so this is really interesting to see Cornelia say um, that you were sort of interested, but it was the emails that really pushed that made that buying decision. That's good to hear that. So frequency of emails. Thank you for raising that, Jamie. Again, the cool thing about this is there isn't a right or wrong. And I did heaps of testing for, for a few years, actually, to work, work out what worked with my audience. Um, there's a lot of blog posts out there that tell you how often you should or shouldn't email people. But I think they're completely useless because your list is completely different to my list. Absolutely not one of us has the same email list. So each group of people is going to react very, very differently. So I used to do every day. Um, I had a really fast moving tech-based topic and industry, and that used to work really well for me. In fact, my, my sales were just on fire back then. However, time's changing, right? People are, need more time. People are a lot busier. And so I've moved mine back to once every five days now. I would recommend at most in a welcome sequence, um, sort of once a week. Um, if you leave it longer than that, in this immediacy period of people being interested, you might lose people. They might get distracted by another thing that's top of mind. If they've joined your email list, there's a reason why they're interested. They're clearly looking at this topic that you teach right now and they want it right now. So I want that first welcome sequence to be as fast as you're willing to push your audience so that you can get them moving in that thing while it's top of mind for them while the fire is still hot. Then when it goes to your nurture sequence, you can slow down those touch points a little bit. The ongoing nurture sequence is much more gentle. It's just being present over a long period of time. So I would probably go welcome sequence today in today's market every five or seven days, just so it's fast enough to constantly be there while they're on a hot topic, but it's not too much that they just can't keep up and they unsubscribe because it makes them feel like they're falling behind. <laughs> Cool. So let's go to our friend ChatGPT, because what we want to do here is we want to pop in a prompt that's going to get ChatGPT to help us come up with these tips. So I'm going to give you guys um, like a prompt that I would put in. By the way, don't forget that you can ask ChatGPT what prompts to give it. <laughs> like, What prompt should I give you for you to help me write a 10 part email sequence? This is how I get good at prompt engineering is I ask, I literally ask ChatGPT what to ask it. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to tell you exactly what I would ask it for creating a 10 part welcome sequence. So let's go in and I'm going to voice type this because it's quicker and easier. We're going to go to tools. We're going to go to voice typing. So what we need to do is we need to tell ChatGPT what we are, what we do, 
and what results we give people. That's really important, first part. Second part, what do we need to do? Create a 10 part welcome sequence. Three, why? What's the purpose? What do we want to achieve with this sequence? So let's do it. I am a course creation specialist and I help experts, entrepreneurs, speakers, authors, coaches, anyone with knowledge to commercialize their IP in the form of courses, coaching programs, books, digital assets, and delivering expert services in the form of training and keynotes. So I've told it what I do, okay? Now I'm gonna need to tell it what my products are so that it kind of understands what I do. I do this by providing my audience with free self-study online courses. I also have a membership called the Edupreneur Academy. And I also run workshops in person. Okay, and the name of the Entrepreneur Academy, by the way, will be changing next year. For those of you that came in late, we got some big, exciting changes and a rebrand, and I can't wait. Okay, uh, what else have we done? So I've told it what my products are. Now, the next thing we want to do is tell it what we need it to help us with. I want to create an 11-part email welcome sequence that will go out to every single lead who joins my email list. The majority of this list have opted in to get my free training products and are highly interested in commercializing their knowledge with courses and a digital education-based business. I want my emails to be highly helpful, practical, nurturing, encouraging, to include my fun and crazy personality. And I want to make sure that everyone can't wait to open my next email because all of my emails are so helpful in helping course creators and entrepreneurs to commercialize their knowledge and create courses. So I've given you an idea. What is it I want? We want that friendship. We want that nurturing. Um, again, I've got my personality in here. You might have a different audience. You might need to say it needs to be highly professional. Um, you know, it needs to have a certain kind of tone to it. Um, mine's going to be a little bit like that. Okay. Each of the emails is going to focus on one core tip around becoming a leading authority in your industry as an educator, trainer, or expert. Each email will also end with a PS style sign off that will direct them to joining my Edupreneur Academy. Edupreneur. <laughs> okay, so you can see here, um, again, I will copy and paste this down into the recording of today's session, but the structure is very straightforward. You're simply going to fill in the gaps and replace this with yours. So now we're gonna take that and we're going to copy, go into ChatGPT and paste that prompt in. And I'm just gonna put, please help me write these 10, oh, I've put 11, haven't I? 11 emails. Enter. Oh, could not pass your authentication token. Please try signing in again. That would help, wouldn't it? <laughs> now, this is why, my dear friends, we write these things on a Google Doc first. Rule number one of not having a complete mental breakdown, always write your stuff on a Google Doc all the time. <laughs> Especially when you're writing emails because everything here is cloud-based, right? Um, you don't want to lose everything you just typed up. That would be very annoying. So let's pop it in. Here we go. Da -da 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 -da. So if anyone tells me that this is just too hard, going to come and whack you over wet fish because it's now given us our 10 part emails. Woo! How good is this? So it's given me some suggested content for these emails.
recap and an invitation. All righty. Now, what we do then is we just go up to email number one. Let's pretend we, we're happy with that, of course. And um, we're going to go down now, copy that one and say, please, please write this email in the style of Sarah Cordoner. Now I've had content that's been out on the internet for a really long time. So the internet actually already knows me, but I'm gonna be showing you guys in a couple of weeks. Um, I'm trying to just find the dates fitted in, how to create a GPT version of yourself. Um, now that we have um, open AI, we can now create clones of ourselves, And I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create your own GPT agent that is an expert in all things you. <laughs> and we're gonna be doing that. It's gonna be a free workshop we're gonna run in the next few days. So here we go. Um, it's actually going to, uh, I wonder if it speaks to me. Welcome to this a second. Cool, there we go. There is our draft email. Yay. So you can do that 11 times so that you have your 11 part welcome sequence. Obviously go through and, and edit as you wish. Now here's our next step. Now we're gonna do the tech. How do we set this baby up? How do we actually make this work on autopilot? Let's do it. So we're going to grab our email and go into any, whatever email builder you're using. Of course, I'm gonna do the demo, demo on this in Techmatics. This process I'm about to show you is exactly the same process regardless of what system you're using. If you're an active campaign, MailChimp, Kajabi, any of them, they all work in essentially the same way. Okay, the buttons just might be in a different place, but the process is the same. So I just wanna reaffirm that before we go digging into here. So in your marketing and emails section, speaks for itself, we have up here on the emails menu, two parts. We have first of all, an email builder, and then we have email campaigns. You build your email in the builder, you send it in the campaigns, if it's a one-off email. If we're creating automations, we build the email in the builder, and we send it in automated workflows. Okay, so we're doing a one-off email, build it in Builder, send it in Campaigns. We also use Campaigns if we're doing what's called a repeating email or an RSS-based email, RSS. Those are emails that will suck in your blog posts for you and your YouTube videos for you and automatically send them out to your list at a frequency that you set. I do have another training on that. But today, because we're doing automations, we're gonna focus on creating an automated email sequence. So I'm gonna leave the campaign section today. We're gonna to go into our email builder to create the email. Now, those of you using Techmatics, or in fact, any platform, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is create a master template that will be your brand template going forward. You need to make sure that you've colored that, got the footers on the bottom with your social media links, right? We're gonna to wanna to have this template that's got your logo or something on it so that every time you send an email, you've got that template there. In Techmatics, we've made what's called a master template for you. So when you go into the email builder section, go up to this bit up here and type in master and you will find here a master template. So grab that master template, go in and edit that first. And that's gonna be your template going forward for the rest of time so that all of your emails are nice and, and um, standardized. I'm gonna just give you a little bit of an example. I don't know if this one is actually real because it's a demo account. But again, all you're gonna want on it is um, like a section for your emails to go in, some kind of unsubscribe link. I don't know why that's there. And you're gonna to wanna to change here when you click on this social media icons. Over here, when you press edit, you can pop in all of the URLs to your social media um, sections there. If I press back, go into Instagram, pop in my Instagram URL there, go back, pop in, you know, and you can add as many of these as you want. So when you press add, you could press the drop dropdown. Um, you can add in other stuff here as well. You can even add in custom ones. Um, so you can pop in a, an icon for maybe something that isn't in our list, in our drop down there. So there's lots of different um, social media icons you can drop in, but once you've filled that in once, because this is a template, they're gonna be there forever. You're not gonna have to go and do this every time you send an email. All right, so with that done, you're just gonna press save template. Um, 
Then what you're gonna do, oh, that's my internet is so slow today, is now you've got that master, leave the master as it is. You're going to clone the master every time you send an email. Let me show you what I mean by that. There's our template there. Let's move me out of the way. Um, oops. I'm going to click on the three dots on the master template and press clone. And this is going to be the name of our email. So we're doing our welcome email. What did she call it up here? Welcome. And the topic was welcome to a journey of transformation. <laughs> so let's pretend we are totes happy with this. I'm going to call this welcome sequence. Oops. Title your stuff, guys. <laughs> welcome sequence. And this is going to be email one. And then the title, welcome. So name of the sequence, number email, title or topic of the email. That's how I do my naming conventions. The future you will thank you if you start using naming conventions today. <laughs> This is going to open up the email editor, and this is where we can pop in all of the content and text for the email and get it all looking good. Now, what did I say before? Always do your drafts inside Google Docs. Do not edit your text on any cloud-based platform ever, because if your internet cuts out, you've lost all your work. So I always recommend you bring it over into a Google Doc first. You do all of your edits here when you're perfectly happy with the text, then you go and pop it in a landing page or an email builder or a website builder or a course lesson. But here we go. What we have over here, I'm gonna move myself up this block, is we have our elements. These are elements. These are all of the different sections that can be built into our email. So we've got text elements, drag and drop. We can pop any text in there. Let's close that bit. We can add an image by dragging and dropping drag and drop, boom. We, I'm gonna kind of close out of that. We can add buttons. Remember we had a button saying, come and join my X, Y, and Z thingy. I'm gonna cut out of that. We can add dividers. Play around with this guys, you can't break stuff, right? You really can't, you can always just press undo. Simple as that. Cross, um, videos, we can add videos into the emails. So if I pop that in there, all you'd have to do is pop in the video URL. If it's a YouTube video, you just pop in the link there. Or you can um, add in like HTML files or VM Vimeos and Wistia links and stuff like that there. But I prefer to just have a YouTube link. What else have we got? Um, we've got frequently asked question drop downs. Ooh, so maybe underneath your, have you considered joining my academy? Um, maybe you have frequently asked questions here. How much is the academy? How long do I have to be locked into it for? Um, what will I learn? How much is it, you know, you've got all these different questions that people might ask and you simply edit those right in here. Um, so I'm going to come out of that, just showing you what the elements are to begin with. You can create pretty columns as well. So if I wanted to have like two sections, hang on, let me move this. Where did that just go? There it is. Um, again, I might have, that. by the way, I was in the layout section there. I might have one side that I want that bit to be text and I want the other side to be an image. That's how you can make these pretty newsletters. And you might have this preset as a template, you know? So that's just to show you what all of the elements are. Here's again, here's a social, here's a social element. So I can drag and drop that wherever I want it. And you know, I could have follow me on socials right here. Again, you edit those by clicking on it opening up each section and popping in your links. But you've already done that in the master template down here. I'm just showing yeah. you. For you. Yep. Is it possible to do all of that and then call that the master template? Absolutely, yes. And that's this is what I highly recommend, especially if you're um, sending out like a newsletter style type email every week. Yeah. You're definitely going to want to design this template first and use that as your template each time, 100%. So you get to make that look however you want it to look. Now, the cool thing is as well, is once I've made email one, um, I can just duplicate that for the rest of the emails in the sequence as well. So if you know this particular sequence of emails is gonna have a, a layout that might be different to my monthly newsletter that's gonna go out, I might just create this style for email one, and then I can duplicate it for email two, three, all the way through to 10. 
Cool. So now we've done that, I'm gonna, um, I'm not gonna worry about deleting any of this stuff because this is just obviously pretend, but I'm gonna make my email now. We wanna pop in our text. We also wanna personalize the email. If you're not personalizing with what we call custom values, you're missing out on increasing that relationship with people. So this is where we're gonna say hi or hello or whatever your style is. And up along the top menu here, and all the email platforms are, are very similar. It's either gonna be the menus on the left or the right or above. It's gonna still be the same thing though, right? The same button. You have here, custom values. And this is a bit of a funny icon. It looks like a cursor in a box. So what we're doing is we're gonna click on this custom values. We're gonna find the contact's first name. So we're gonna click on contact, first name. And you'll see this bit of code comes up here. What that will do is automatically place in your contacts first names. That's, you don't have to do anything else because you've got them as a contact in the system or they've signed up for a lead magnet and they put their first name in. That's how the system knows what to put in that custom value space. Then I'm gonna paste in all of my text. You're gonna to have to do a little bit of formatting. So again, you might wanna come up here and change the spacing. All the platforms are slightly different in how their formatting and spacing looks. I find that a spacing of 1.5 line spacing is the best. Um, it gives people space to read. Now, our other rule is I also recommend that you add in extra spaces and space between sentences. So normally we would keep this sentence together. In the email world, I would actually space that because people read in bite-sized pieces and they're more likely to get to the bottom of your email if the um, text is more spaced out. Don't know why, it's just what research has shown us. So again, I'd go through and I'd be separating out all of the sentences because it just helps people read through it. <laughs> Our simple brains, right? That's, that's happening. We also are then going to add in any links. So I may, for instance, have a blog post about edupreneurship. In fact, I do. Let's go and find it. So I've got that special word here. Sarah Ordiner, what is edupreneurship? Going to go find that blog post or YouTube video or whatever can be found. There we go. There's a blog post I wrote 500 years ago. Let's get the link. And this is what we're doing now is we're using these emails. Why? To get people to get to know us even more, to cross promote our content. So I've taken the link to this particular blog post. Inside the email, we highlight that word and we're gonna go and find the little linky icon, the little link icon. Grab that, paste in our link URL. And I always put open in a new window. This means when they click it, does it just load in the screen that they're on? or is it going to completely open up a whole new tab? We want them to open up a whole new tab. So press save. And now we have a clickable link. By default, inside Techmatics, that link won't change color. That will just be underlined. So I also like to just add a blue color to it so that people can see that it's a clickable link. You might wanna do that as well. So I go up here, they click on the little text color, change that, and now they can see that it's a link. Most of us have been trained in that already. So once we're happy with it, um, we might add in our little button. So remember we had our button element that we wanted to add at the bottom. Let's add a button there. And I'll show you what we do with our buttons. Click on the button to edit it. And over here on the left, again, the platform you're using, if you're using something different, it might be above or below, or it might pop up in a window, but it's exactly the same principle. First of all, you have your button text. So I might have check out the Academy whatever your hero product was. And then you can change the colors of the font. You can change the color of the button. Simply click on that. If you've got a hex code to match your branding, pop it in there. Um, otherwise you can just use the color picker over here, right? So I might be like, yeah, that's my color, cool. You can see the preview of what it looks like there. And now we add in the link. So obviously um, let's pretend that's linked to my academy, not the blog post, but <laughs> you pop in the link there, you press save template, and now you have your email. 
Now you can also send a test email to yourself by clicking on these little buttons. If you wanna have a little look at what it will look like, um, press send a test email, send your, pop in your email address details there and it will send you a test. The other thing you can do here is preview the template and see what it will look like on desktop. Um, and it will, you'll also be able to check all the links here as well. What will it look like on mobile? Da -da 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 -da. So you can move around those different tabs there just to check it out. If I click that, it should take me to that blog post. So you're gonna check all your links work. Very important. Now, the other thing to note, when you're sending test emails to yourself from any platform, not just Techmatics, you won't get your unsubscribe footer. Why? Because you can't unsubscribe from your own list. <laughs> A lot of people go, my unsubscribe's not working. It is working. Um, either send it to a different email address that's not registered in your system um, or uh, send it to a friend or someone that can open it up for you. Uh, but I just want to keep, keep that in mind. It's not always going to be there. Okay, now we've done a little test. We've checked that it's all working. We've done our little view. I'm going to go back to my email builder over here. And now we're going to basically repeat that process with our next 10 emails. However, we've now done the hard work of creating the template, right? So what I would do for email number two is again, I'd go back here, I'd go and get ChatGPT to write the second email for me. And then I would pop it into my document, edit it in my document first, then go back to my, um, there it is, my emails. There's email number one we've just done. I am going to clone that template because we've just added in all our colors, all our button colors, we've got our PS in there, we've got the everything we want. So I'm just gonna click on email number one and press clone. And I'm gonna change this to welcome sequence, email number two, and what did ChatGPT tell us this email was gonna be about? This number two email is gonna be all about finding your niche. So I'm just gonna go and add finding, oopsie, Finding your niche. Cool. Now we know what the topic is. Press clone. It's going to open it up. We're going to go in and edit that. Press save. Send a test. Open it in preview. Check all of the buttons work. Boom. Email number two is done. Repeat the process again for email number three. So I'm just going to press save. We're not going to go around editing all of this one again. Again, I go to email number two. Press duplicate name it with email number three, and you get the point. Process is moving forward. We're gonna do that until we've done all 10 emails, and then we're going to put them in our automation. Let's do that. So now you've built all of your emails in your builder. We're gonna to go to automated workflows, and I will, by the way, summarize these steps for you in one of my little flow charts that I do as well, so that you've got this, these steps all in a flow chart to follow nice and easily or to give to your virtual assistant to do for you. So workflows, inside workflows, you see here this, they were on this workflows tab, we're going to press create a workflow. Now draw your attention to the fact we have lots of pre-made recipes for you in here, lots of pre-made automations for webinar confirmation registrations and all kinds of things. But we're gonna actually press start from scratch because I want you guys to learn how to build automations from zero. Start from scratch. This is loading. Sip of my soup. Step one, always name your workflow first. <laughs> Get into the habit of doing this. So what do I call mine? Welcome sequence. 11 tips, okay? This is gonna be for everyone who joins your list. Let me make this a bit bigger for you so it's easier for you to see. So the first thing we need to add in here is the trigger. What is it that's actually starting, firing off, firing off this sequence? When we press add, it's going to pop up all of the things, all of the actions that can start off an automation. We've got here, you know, um, someone, a contact has been created. Now that's definitely one we're going to use, but I'm just gonna scroll down to show you some other examples here. Um, if a certain note has been added, uh, if a task, you can create all these amazing webhooks and connect Techmatics to literally anything. If somebody's filled in a form or a survey, if somebody's clicked a specific link, 
Uh, if somebody's filled in a Facebook ad form or a TikTok ad form, if somebody has watched a certain percentage of a video, if somebody's filled in a form on LinkedIn for you, if somebody has attended or failed to attend an appointment, uh, if they've moved stages in your customer journey pipeline, these can all start off automations. Uh, if someone has become an affiliate, if somebody has started a module inside your courses, if they've started a lesson or finished a lesson or they're a new sign up into your courses, if they have um, opened a particular product or logged in, if somebody's paid an invoice, if somebody's bought something, <laughs> these are all different things that can fire off an automation. I hope your brain's spinning at just how many cool, crazy things you can do right here. But we're going to go real simple. We are starting with a contact has been created. So this means when a contact is added to your system, you're going to put them in this welcome sequence. So we're going to do contact created, contact created, do, 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 save trigger. Now we've started it. When anyone joins our list, they join this particular automation. Now, another way that you might um, have this, it might not be people joining your contact database. It could be that they have opted into a particular lead magnet. So those of you who have very different operations in your businesses, you might not want to start your automation with contact created. Because if you're teaching leadership and candle making, you don't want everyone to go through the same welcome sequence, right? You're gonna want everyone who joined the leadership lead magnet thing to go into a leadership welcome sequence. And you're going to want everybody who joined the candle making freebie to join the candle making sequence. So this applies only to people who have very different fields of expertise and you're operating all of that from one system. However, um, let's just show you how to do that. If those of you who only want to put people in a welcome sequence, if they have joined a particular freebie, you're going to press add a new trigger. And down here, you're going to go and find form submitted. Anyone who fills in their email address and their name to get something for free from you has filled in what is called an opt-in form. And you create these forms inside the forms section of your Techmatics account. So you will have to obviously have created that opt-in form to your freebie first. If you don't know how to do that, there's a course on your dashboard with me called Lead Magnet Launcher, and it will show you how to create a lead magnet and the forms so that it shows up here. But I'm gonna pick a random form here. Do we have a form? Oops, here we go. Do we have a form? Oh, workflow trigger name. We've got to tell it what form. Uh, what form? The form is, so you go into the filters right here and you're telling the system what form is it. So you go to filters, add, the form is drop down, lead magnet one, lead magnet two. You see here we've got some forms, pretend forms that we've created in here. So let's say that was the candle making course. The form is candle making lead magnet, save trigger. So those of you who do want to only add people based on them opting into a particular thing, that's what you're going to start your automation with. All right, I'm going to just leave that there. We don't need both of them, but hey. Now, what happens next? The next thing you guys are gonna to wanna to do here, if we look back on um, our examples, is we do wanna tag people and also tell the system what stage of our customer journey we're at. The customer journey is, remember, are they just a lead? Have they bought something? Have they bought the course? Have they joined the coaching program? Are they in the membership? Why? Because when we look at our customer journey, we wanna be able to see where all our customers are at. We also want the dashboard on the front of our system to tell us how many people are leads, how many people have converted, what's our conversion rate, we're going to get this system to automate this for us as well. First thing I want to do is add a tag though. A tag is basically a label that you'll stick in on your contacts so that you can see everything they've done, everything they do, all the stuff they've opted into, clicked on, bought, and so on. So this tagging will allow you to create really customized segments or sub lists inside your account to do smart marketing later on. So I'm gonna press the add button. Whenever we press this add button, it will bring up all of the options as to what we can make the system do next. 
So do we want to update the contacts record? Do we want to assign them to a staff member? Do we want to add a particular note to the customer's record? Do we want to add tasks that are assigned to that client? Do we want to send them an email, an SMS, a Slack message, a phone call, a voice message, an Instagram message, a Facebook message? Do we want to um, send an internal alert to one of our internal teams? Do we want to send them a request for a review? Do we want to make one of those if else conditions? Do we want to wait for a period of time? Um, do we want to add in a particular date to tell the system to wait for a date? This works really well if you're doing webinars or courses or coaching programs or workshops. You can wait until the 20th of December and say, hey, our workshop's running today. Here's the link, right? That's how you get the system to wait until a certain time. But there's loads of different things we can do in here. We have AI. We have ChatGPT. We have the agents in here as well. There's tons of different stuff that you can do, request payments, marketing, customized Facebook ad audiences, you name it, we've got it in here. For now, we're just keeping it simple. We're just gonna send them a tag. <laughs> we're just gonna add a tag, all right? So we're gonna add a contact tag and um, I'm gonna call it tag and joined email list. Now, of course, if they had, um, opted into a particular lead magnet, I'd probably put that tag there as well. But this is where we can either search through any tags we've already added in the past, always scroll through that first. You don't want duplicated tags. If it's not there, then you're just gonna type in a tag and save it for the first time. So this might be joined email list, okay? Add a new tag. Maybe it was a particular lead magnet that they came in from based on that form, right? So let's pretend that they had opted in to the free candle making course, okay, add tag. So this will now add these two tags, these notes to your client record. And later on, you're gonna be able to filter your contacts list. So please show me everyone who has this tag. So that's gonna give you a segmented list of those particular people. And then you can say to the system, send an email to only the people who have this tag. Let's say you've got a special candle making workshop coming up. Right? You're going to want to filter out those particular people and say, hey, I've noticed that you're interested in the candle making. You've joined my free thingy once before because you've already been part of my membership, you know, or you've done something with me. Um, I'm going to give you a discount. Cool. I'm going to save action. So now when somebody joins my list, they get tagged. Now we want to move the stage that they're at in my customer journey to that lead stage. Let's just remind ourselves where we were with that at the very, very beginning. I'm going to come out of here. I wanna show you back in our customer journey. Oh, this is the Sarah Cordoner's real one, isn't it? Have we got a pretend one open anywhere? Tech toolbox demo, here we go. Got a demo with them. That's the customer journey. And I made one called customer journey, I believe. There it is. And we've got our leads, we've got an ebook, we've got a course. These are different things that they could buy. We now want to start dropping people into all of these different stages. Because if I go and find you another demo one I've done before, and I remove all of my filters, you will see here, here's all the pretend people that are leads. Here are the people that have purchased something. Here are the people that have booked a strategy call. Here are the people that didn't turn up. Here are the people that have joined or booked my course. You can see all this at a glance. Now, the other thing you'll notice is they have a dollar value associated with them when they join each stage of your customer journey. Because we're gonna tell the system what that client is worth if they're at that stage of the customer journey. And this is then what feeds data to your dashboard. This is how your dashboard gets this information. Now at the moment, this is only a pretend account, so there's not anything to show you on this, but um, if I go and drop this back, it's not gonna show me anything anyway, because it's just pretend, but um, this is where you will see how many people are on your list and what their monetary value is. And they're gonna see here what your conversion rate is, because as you're moving people through your customer journey, the system will be able to tell, okay, she's got 50 people in the leads column and each of her people are worth $1,000. That's $50,000 sat there in the leads column. I'm telling you now, there ain't nothing motivational to do sales and send emails than looking at that column, <laughs> right? So this is what's gonna be uh, being updated um, in the, the back end. So I'm going to go back to this automation. We've tagged them. Now we wanna move them to that stage of the customer journey. Press the add button 
and inside Techmatics and also Active Campaign. This is called Opportunities or Opportunity Pipelines. So I'm going to scroll down to our Opportunities, which is our Pipelines customer journeys. And you can see here we have the option to create or update the opportunity. Click on that. You can change the name here to what you want to name it. So I'm going to call this Move to Leads. And the pipeline is the one that we called My Customer Journey. No, did we? It was just called Customer Journey, wasn't it? There it is. There's the one we made. Customer Journey. What stage are we moving them to? We are moving them to the lead stage because at this, at this point, they haven't bought anything. They've just joined our list. What is the opportunity's name? This is this bit here. Let me show you what it looks like. The opportunity name is the name that shows up on the card. So these are the names that you want seen. And I like to have the contacts name showing here. How you do that is you press this little tag and you press contact full name and boom, that will now automatically add, like you see here, the contacts full name to the stage record. And what is their value? This means what are they worth to you financially? Everyone has a different way of calculating this. Some people calculate the cheapest thing they could buy as their value. Other people calculate the most expensive thing they could buy as their value. What is a person worth to you if you were able to convert them? So for me, I tend to say, well, I'm gain my goal is to get everyone in the academy. And hopefully I can get them all to stay for at least a year. So we're talking like roughly $1,500. Why can't I add that in? Oh, because I haven't got my number thing turned on. So you pop in your value that you have decided your customer is worth when they're a lead. The status is have you won that sale or not? Or is the sale opportunity still open? Now, these people are leads, so they're definitely still open to um, being sold to. Okay, so I se select it as open, leave the rest. We're going to press save. Now, what will happen is anyone who joins my list will now get tagged and will automatically be added to this leads column. Yay, now our dashboard is going to start being updated automatically. The next thing we're going to do is start sending them emails. <laughs> so how are we going to do this? We're going to press the add button again. Add. And then we're going to go and find the email section or just type it in. I like to type in send email. There it is. The email option will come up. And from there, we're going to now name it. What's the action name is the, is the label that we see in our builder over here. So I'm going to call this email one. Welcome. And from is you. From email is the email address that you want your email to be sent from. Okay. It's a S coordinate. Um, in fact, you can do this when you're creating the email in the email builder, but I didn't fill that in. So I'm just going to manually type this in. What's the subject? Welcome to a journey of transformation. I think our guy said. Chat GPT, welcome to a journey transformation. Now you can even add custom fields into your email subject line. So I could say, welcome to your journey of transformation, comma, press the tag, contact, first name. So in the subject line itself, it will say, welcome to your journey of transformation, Sarah. How cool is that? Now templates, this is where you're gonna go and find your email. What did we call this? We called it welcome sequence. This is why the naming conventions are so important. I love to have the convention starting with the sequence of what that email belongs to. So we've got our welcome sequence, email one, welcome email. Boom, save, and now there's the email. We're then going to wait for a period. So let's press the add button type in wait, there's our wait step. Um, what name are you gonna give this step? Now let's pretend I'm gonna wait five days. So I'm gonna press wait for five days, time delay, wait for five days, save. 
boom, now we wait for five days. Now we're gonna add the next email, press add, type in email, send email, go to template section. I'm gonna find the welcome email and it was email two, find your niche, save. Now we've got email two and I didn't label it properly. So let's call that email two, find your niche, save action. You get the point. So now we just keep on building this out, press add, wait step, wait for, and I like to put my labels in here as well. Time delay, wait for, five days, save action. And you just keep going. <laughs> now at the very end, you could even be clever and offer the chance for them to leave a review. A review for emails? Well, of course, because yours have been super helpful. So you can actually send a review request here via email and press save. And there's uh, there's review email, it's review requests in um, settings in the reviews settings section. But this is where you can go, hey, have you found the last, you know, this wraps up our 10 tips on course creation. And if you found these helpful and you've actually made some progress, would you kindly leave me a review? It's free training you're giving these guys. This is a really clever way to build up your reviews. So there's your sequence. You're gonna press save. And the other thing we can even do in here, I think, can we still, can we do this now? Can we move them to another workflow? Ba, 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 ba. Can we move them to another workflow? Yes, we can. So what we have at the very, very end then is we now press add to a workflow. What's the workflow? Do I have an ongoing nurture sequence in here? Boom, long-term nurture sequence or ongoing nurture sequence if we had one, okay? So now press save, that's the very, very end. So I'm gonna put here, move to ongoing nurture sequence. That's my label for myself, save. So they've gone through your 10 part welcome sequence. They sent them a review request and then you move them into the ongoing nurture sequence. Now I guys set this up for my Entrepreneur Academy with my 10 steps to course creation approximately eight or nine years ago. I haven't updated that email sequence in eight years and it's made me millions of dollars for real. So you will have a little bit of work to put this together. As you've seen, we've managed to smash that out in 90 minutes with me teaching along the way. That will now be set and forget in place for a significantly long time. I'm only about to update this now, eight years later. <laughs> so um, it is amazing. I know this feels really overwhelming, but you are going to be putting your sales on autopilot, especially if you have remembered to put the here are the X ways that I can help you blur at the bottom of that email sequence. Now let's talk about the ongoing nurture sequence. I'm going to just finish up with that one there for the last five, 10 minutes, and then we'll wrap today's session up. The ongoing nurture sequence, as I've shown you up here, they're going to move into this. This one's a bit slower, but guess what? It's exactly the same. Guess what again? You've already done the work. My ongoing nurture sequence, so I'm gonna take you into a real one somewhere. Here we go, let's go into mine. Um, this is my real ongoing nurture sequence. It is all of the tips that you have probably been sharing on social media, that you probably already have videos made about, that you probably already have blog posts about, or that you're going too soon, right? <laughs> Is it in here? What's going on? Am I in the right thing? I'm going back to sequence. Here we go. Why is that not opening? What am I doing here? Oh, I'm in the wrong one. That's why. Help if I was in automated workflows, wouldn't it? <laughs> An email builder. All right, inside your email, automated emails. Let's go to ongoing nurture sequence. There she is. Now, all your ongoing nurture sequence is, is just regularly being in touch with your audience. Note that there is no trigger. Why is there no trigger? Because everyone comes through the welcome sequence first, and at the end of the welcome sequence, they're then sent here by the system. So we don't need a trigger. They're already being sent here. So what we do now is I've added a tag. What's the tag? Tag, they've entered the ongoing nurture sequence. <laughs> Why do I want this tag? When I look at somebody's client record, I can see straight away 
where people are at in the journey. That's one thing we've done. Now there's still a lead. They still haven't bought anything necessarily. So I don't need to move their stage in the customer journey. Um, but all I'm gonna do now is I send these weekly. Here's a tip. It's just a tip email. Um, it's again, built in the builder. And then we simply grab that template in here. There's the template that I've pulled over and that email sends. So I want you, if you have got any blog posts, all you're gonna do is copy and paste that blog content, go to the email builder, paste it into an email and pull it into your welcome sequence. If you have got any video tips at all up on YouTube or on social media, go grab the link to that video and say, here's an email, here's the tip, click this link to go and watch the video or read the rest of the blog post or watch this YouTube. And I will be back in touch again next week. Again, remember, the bottom of the email must have your PS. If you are still looking to get whatever result it is you help people with, then here are three ways that I can help you do that. Or five ways that I can help you do that. How many things that you're pulling out. And that's all you do. Every time you create a new video or a new blog post, what do you do? You scroll to the bottom of this, you press add and you add it to your list. You wait seven days, you add another tip. This is how now you don't have to focus in on that really specific thing you might have been focusing on in the welcome sequence. Now you can start adding all kinds of tips. So you'll see from mine, my welcome sequence focused on what is my core field of expertise, course creation. When they come to my ongoing nurture sequence, this is when I start talking about all of the other stuff that I help people with. How to create emails, how to do this, how to write a blog post, how to do tech, how to set up a system, right? I now start bringing in all these other tips. Wait for a week and look, you see here, there's 55 people about to move there, 67 people about to move there. 131 people about to move there. And it just goes on and on and on. Now get this, because I have been creating content for years, it keeps being added to for years. Now we talked at the very beginning of this about how long it's taken some of you guys to join and buy my stuff. Some of you, the average is 18 months to two years. Now I have got enough emails in this ongoing nurture sequence from the day you join my list to nurture you for four and a half years. I could die today, please don't do that. I love you universe, All right? But if I drop dead today, my, my business would still keep running and selling for another four and a half years without me being here at all. How mad is that? That my dear friends is a sustainable bottom line. That is what's part of the valuation of a business. That is what will make you keep selling stuff even when you've spent the last three months traveling around the world, moving house <laughs> and doing everything else. This is how it works. People think you're busy all the time, whereas actually all you've done is been smart enough to create a system. The 10 part welcome sequence should take you no more than a day to do, set and forget for the next eight years, <laughs> if you're anything like me. This ongoing nurture sequence, you just keep adding to every single week. So Febby actually has um, a task on her tasks list that is once a week, it's a repeating task, of course, managed in Techmatics. Let's take you to the new task builder now. Um, inside the new task builder over here, it's basically replacing Trello, ClickUp, Monday. It has um, really advanced uh, task management and project management features in there. Um, but basically, Febby now has a weekly task inside her system. I say now, I think, it's been, I think you've had this task for nine years, Febby. <laughs> Whenever Sarah has once a week, please go to Sarah's blog, and see if she's published any new blog posts. Once a week, please go to Sarah's YouTube channel and see if she's published any new YouTube videos, add it to the ongoing nurture sequence. So once a week, she'll just go in and check those places and just add a new email to the bottom of the sequence. And it will never, ever, ever run out, ever. You just keep that bad boy, constantly trickling people through it, constantly trickling in sales. You're not constantly in sales mode, but you constantly got that money coming in. Just on the tasks and project manager there, um, we've got a, a little, I think a little demo one here. I'll just open it up and show you what it looks like. Um, but this is where you can start adding um, columns and tasks. A lot of you will see that I have, for instance, for, oh, what's going on here? It's all updating on me. 
Okay, I don't know why that's doing that. Um, but I think it's because I'm in a demo account and stuff's not working properly. You can click on uh, create daily tasks, weekly tasks, monthly tasks, yearly tasks. You can connect those tasks to clients and customers and projects as well. So it all gets very fancy. Now I'm going to go and check the chat before we wrap up today. Let's have a look at any questions. If anyone wants to turn your microphone on, um, please do. But I'm just going to scroll through now and ask. Is the price increasing in 2024 for the Edupreneur Academy? Yes, it is, but not for existing members. The price is significantly increasing to my academy. However, um, it's only going to apply to new members. So if you are already a member, you will be grandfathered in on the new price and it is going to be wild. So do make sure that you're a member before the end of the year. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to be um, facing a, a much bigger new price. Uh, Deborah says, I've got no audio signing out. Oh, no. Uh, Jamie says, when you're live, when you're in a live launch, do you recommend turning off the welcome sequence? Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. So when I am doing a big launch for a coaching program, like many of you will see my concept of course, I will have a month of very heavy marketing for my, for my coaching program. If you're doing the same, which you should be, I also I would recommend you go to your ongoing nurture sequence and turn it off. It's simply a button um, that's on off. I'll show you where it is for those of you who need to, know, to see that. See up here on top right, it says draft or published. If I want to turn it off, I just turn it off. And I wait until my 30 day marketing period for my coaching program is over. Then I turn it back on, back on again. That way you're not just smashing people's inboxes with, with emails. Um, so thank you so much, Naomi, for bringing that up. Do I worry about content being outdated? Um, yes, there are some topics I have that where content outdates, such as tech, particularly. Um, so we just, again, have a spreadsheet that is marked with tech-based content. And we'll just go back and revise those emails only. But um, generally speaking, with your ongoing nurture sequence, keep it to evergreen topics. And that's why um, with a lot of mine, they're able to stay there for a really long time. So we focus more on like behavioral stuff, general organization, mindsets, you know, basic stuff that's just going to last a really long time. Michelle says, is there any training on the tasks and project function? Yes, there is. If you drop into the YouTube channel for Techmatics, there's a playlist called tasks and project management in there now. And there is uh, there are some videos in that section already on how we can use that. Jamie, please ask away. Please Thank ask you. Me. Just one question I can't get my hat, head around one point. So you have this kind of evergreen nurture sequence, but how I do it is every Wednesday I'm sending a new email to my list and I'll like batch write it maybe six weeks in advance. So each week they're getting something every Wednesday, which is current. So what is the advantage of doing it the way you do it? Are you just constantly adding on? So everyone's getting different emails at different times, as opposed to my whole list getting the same email every week. Yeah. So I actually do a bit of both. Um, I will send a, you know, let's say this week, ChatGPT just launched X, Y, and Z. Oh, news my audience will love. And, and, you know, it's in the moment you want to send that email out. So I will keep the ongoing nurture sequence going, but some weeks they might get two emails because I've manually sent one out through campaigns because it's something really hot and trending and in the moment. So I'd be looking at all of those weekly emails that you have been sending out, pull out the ones that are really evergreen that can just last, go into the system, add them to the ongoing thread. Um, and then just when you do have some cool news to share or, you know, update on your life, what's going on, um, add that on top of the everyday ongoing nurture sequence. Yeah. Okay. And so you definitely recommend doing that rather than, because right now, I guess all the ones I've written in the past, if you come into my world now, you're not going to get them. So is, is this why you do this? So they're not wasted those ones you've previously written? Yeah. And the other main reason is, you know, what happens if you're sick? What happens if you move house? I got really, really sick this year and I, I was, I've really struggled this year with my health. And by the way, I found out it's all good. It was black mold toxicity poisoning, but it nearly did kill me. I genuinely, it, I had brain swelling and everything it was pretty bad, but um, I couldn't work properly for months. And if I hadn't had those automated nurture sequences in place, my business would have stopped, literally would have stopped. So um, that, it just keeps going when, you know, you, when you can't, when you're not there, when you're really busy, when you're planning the launches or building something else. Um, and people don't mind, you know, it, people don't mind getting these extras if they're on your list because they like you and they like your content. The other way you could do it is instead of sending those emails weekly in the ongoing nurture sequence, you might just send them every two weeks. 
make that wait step 14 days instead of seven so that you still can send out your weekly email that you like and enjoy writing in the moment if you're doing more vlogging style and uh, vlogging style um then just make the wait step 14 days okay yeah great thank you awesome any more questions Sarah so Wade, um, I, I love how you have the emails that are automated before a call or, or something like that. So is that the same process you go through and then you just add the links and stuff within the email? Um, and that's yeah. your time thing as well, right? So you do it two hours before a call or a, something like that. Is that correct? Yeah, brilliant question. So I do have a more detailed training video on this in the automations playlist on YouTube, but I will actually bring this up because this is, um, well, hang on, let me just check. What have I mucked around with? I shouldn't do this in real ones. Debbie's going to kill me. <laughs> All right. So um, when it comes to creating automations, let's say, you know, you've got a, a membership or a coaching program um, or like me, you know, you've got academy where you do have these set calls. Again, a, a job that I give to Febby that she will do for the year is go in and create a workflow for the membership. So I'm going to just quickly show you what, how to do these date-based reminders because there is a little bit of a trick to it and it is a little bit hard to work out by yourself if someone hasn't explained it. But let me show you now. What I would do is I would go to workflows. Um, any of you who are planning a series of workshops for members, for instance, for next year, this is what I recommend you do. You go in, you create from scratch a new workflow. And I'm going to call this, I don't know, let's just call it my Academy membership. So anyone who joins my membership will get put into the membership workflow. So we always name it first. I'm going to call it the membership um, workflow. Now, what triggers it? It's triggered by them joining the membership. Now, I probably don't have a membership in here in this demo account. However, let's scroll down to our memberships option. By the way, memberships also means courses or any products whatsoever. But let's scroll down um, and oh, we've got the, they've granted an offer. They've been given access. Let's do that. Granted access. So they've been granted access. How did they get granted access? Because they bought it, all right? So the, the system will give them access to a product that they've purchased. Let's see if I've got a membership. Here we go. Here's Sarah's Pretend Membership Academy. You have to have created the products first in your courses area for this to show up, okay? So make sure you go into your courses and you create a course or, and you bundle them together and it's published. Then it's gonna show here. So anyone who joins my academy is now going to go into this workflow. What I might have then, obviously, I'm going to have your welcome emails in between. I'm just going to randomly pull them over just for the sake of an example here. Let's pull over a template email. Um, but let's pretend that's the welcome to my amazing academy. You're going to love it here, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, we're going to tag them as well. Now, let's pretend we've got a workshop running on the 25th of November. What we need to do first is create a, have we updated actual date and time events? So set an event start date. Boom. That's the one we're going to pick. This is going to be, let's pretend my workshop running on the 25th of November is going to be the flower arranging course. Okay. Flower arranging workshop. Um, let's call this 25th of November. Okay. What is it? Uh, it's a date. A specific date and time. Click. What date is it? Glad you asked. 25th of November. And it's going to be at um, 7 a.m. Because, you know, we're all up arranging our flowers at 7 a.m., aren't we? <laughs> all right. Why is it not let me? Oh, I know why. It's because I've got my, I haven't got my number lock working. Come on. I am to be working. It has to be. Ah, my number thing isn't working. Okay, you get the point. My button lock isn't on <laughs> so we choose the time um and brilliant now we can send an email now if i change that um you know maybe my workshop actually starts at 9 a.m but i've set the time to 7 a.m so that i can send a reminder email so over here what i do is send an email i wouldn't create a full um a full builder for this i would just go hi i build it like in the text area so instead of selecting a template i'm just going to go straight here Hi, custom values, contact first name. Um, your flower arranging workshop starts in two hours from now. Here's the link to join. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. 
And then I pop in the Zoom link by hovering over there, pressing link and dropping the link in there. Now, because I said it at 7 a.m., I know that this workshop must be actually starting at 9 a.m. <laughs> Love me. Dot, dot, dot. Save action. Boom. Oh, there are some issues because I haven't filled in my email address and everything up here. Okay, so obviously I need to fill all of that stuff in. Um, let me just see if that will autofill for me. There we go. Great. Save action. There we go. So they now get an email reminder on the 25th of November. Um, next thing we might have, so you, she's just going to go through the whole year. So again, I tell you guys, plan your calendar in advance. We're going to be doing some planning in our next session. Um, this might be the, um, I don't know, email marketing workshop. Um, I don't know why my mouse isn't working, but there we go. You get the point. That's how we do the reminders before. Fantastic. Oh. Good, hey? Um, just checking, Jamie said, still pondering and digesting all of this. I've got 4,000 on my list, nice list size. Uh, if I create this nurture sequence now for anyone new who comes in, uh, the 4,000 who are on the list will only receive the emails I create from now on, right? Now you can actually add your whole list to your ongoing nurture sequence and I recommend you do that. So what you would do um, inside uh, or Techmatics or any platform, I'm just going to press confirm on that to save this, is once you've created your ongoing nurture sequence, you can actually go into your contacts list and you can mass add everyone to that new nurture sequence, which I recommend you do. Because again, a lot of people might have missed those last emails, <laughs> that it's it's all going to be good. So over here, um, you, I don't have any contacts in here because this is a pretend account, but you there will be a box. Oh, I think we do have pretend people in here, don't we? Up here when it loads, you can select all, and then, there we go, it's showing, select all, and then it will say select all, because that will be here, it will only select the first 20, then it will say select all 4,000, and it will select all 4,000. Then you can go over to here, where's the workflow, there we go, add to a workflow, and it will say, yes, okay, I understand that all 4,000 people are gonna be added to this workflow. And then it will say, which one? Um, and I'll go, oh, you know, this particular one we've just made, whatever, I'm just making it up now. Choose the one, the ongoing nurture sequence. Do you want to add them all at once or do you want to drip them over? I'm gonna add them all at once. This action note is a note to self. It goes in the client's record so that it shows that, you know, Dave was moved to the new ongoing nurture sequence. So I'm just saying here, moved to new sequence, ongoing nurture sequence. It's just a note to yourself um, that will go in the, in the contacts record. And then I simply press add to campaign and workflow and all those 4,000 people will be added to that automation now that it's been created. Julio, any more questions? Um, just just confirm you're going to send out those couple of things you sort of said that that first sheet and the other thing right yeah absolutely so i will send you through the prompt that i used the diagram of the different flows of those automations and i'll also create like a little step flow chart for you of the main steps that you would follow to send out an automated email um, otherwise, again, there are in the automations playlist on YouTube, there's loads of training on there as well. So your goal is to focus on getting those 10 emails written and loaded into automations. I want to see screenshots of these 10 part sequences dropped in the Facebook group uh, to inspire everyone. It's, it really does make a massive difference. Thank you, Debbie. I'm still very much in recovery, um, but I uh, luckily... Luckily, don't have eyeballs popping out my head and, and that's sick anymore, so it's going well. Uh, glad it helped. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you go and take action on this really quickly. Now, coming up, we have um, we have Facebook Groups Formula. is our upcoming workshop. We're going to be learning how to create an engaging Facebook group. We also have Street Cred Strategy coming up in the Academy. We're going to be learning how to win awards and how to get PR coverage. Um, don't know if you've noticed, won a few big ones this year. Um, and... <laughs> Really good. You've just got to be in it to win it. Um, congratulations to Jamie. You've taken a few smashes home as well this month. Well done. Um, so we're going to talk about that. We're also going to be doing um, Map Your Magic for 2024. We're going to be sitting down and actually planning out what you're going to offer, how you're going to offer it, um, Going, taking you through my 90-day planning strategy that I use all year. It is on my desk 
24 hours a day in front of me. This is what controls my crazy brain um, and it keeps me on track and keeping goals all the time. So we're going to be doing that in Map Your Magic. And then for those of you who are woo-woo inclined, um, Gypsy Sarah comes out in December and I'll be taking you through Survive and Thrive. That is my spiritual astrology based training program that focuses on using um, your stars, your magic to really find what your purpose actually is. What is the message you should be sharing? What is the thing that you're really here to teach um, in accordance with the stars? So I bring that out once a year for those people who are interested in doing the spiritual work and aligning that with your business too. So lots of exciting things coming up the rest of this year and next year is going to be fire. So please make sure that you are keeping an eye on some of the changes that are going to come. It's so exciting. Um, oh, Jamie. I owe all my sex to you. You did it all yourself. You did the work. I love you so much. Stay safe over there in that crazy, crazy situation you're in right now. Um, and I can't wait to see all your results. So make sure you share because every time you share what you're doing and getting done, you inspire other people as well. So, um, you know, give them FOMO at the same time as helping push everyone else along. If your automation screenshot gets shown um, in that group, everyone else is going to want to have a go as well. So keep inspiring, keep changing lives. I love you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank yeah. you, Sarah.